calm Avery lives a life of solitude, hidden from sight behind a battered junkyard and a congregation of dying machines. It's here he creates his bizarre art, which he claims originates from his eccentric family. We've been uh, in England since six, 1640. The every name has been, but I go back to uh, 1066 and further yeah, in English history. William the Conqueror is my 32nd uh, grandfather. I am the sixth cousin of Queen Elizabeth. Tom's family tree has many branches, but Tom's kinfolk are so unusual when you consider the very unusual types. Tom claims his sculpting ability is channeled to a 19th century character from his own imagination. Dr. Evermore was an Englishman. He had a, a belief that he could perpetuate himself back into the heavens on a magnetic lightning force beam inside a glass ball inside a copper egg. And that's what the Forevertron is all about. But before we view the incredible Forevertron, we must learn more about what is the inspiration and motivation behind these bizarre art pieces. You'd lose all the uh, power energy that you've got to create something if you've got all tied up in models and mad cats. That's my thinking, you know, just go do it. Take the material and glue it together, and that's the end of the story. Tom admits the Industrial Revolution is an inspiration. That period in history, named after Queen Victoria, may help to find this Dr. Evermore as the Victorian era was dominated by the advent of machines and new technologies. This new age of mechanical wonders ignited the fertile imaginations of many writers. One of the things that is very fundamental and basic with me is we do not alter any shapes or forms. Instead, Tom, as Dr. Evermore, uses only existing shapes to create metal creatures. Tom believes that each of these creatures is imbued with life. He does not, however, know who breathed life into his creatures. And that's the spider. Whether it ate somebody up in order to, to uh, evolve into something, I don't know, but there it is. The size of this immense creature is difficult to gauge until you notice the human onlooker in the background. By drawing on an extinct past, Tom has renewed the tired lives of machinery from the Industrial Revolution. Now every item is serving a new and unique purpose. By adding new flesh to these old ancient bones, perhaps Tom's own breath gives new life to these old machines. And all the birds you can walk right up in and give them a, a blow on the horn or you can, uh, the percussion birds will play, you can ring their bells or hit the drums or whatever you may want to do. Isn't that something, huh? From a brass and horn section to a complete timpani, this orchestra plays a song no bird watcher has ever heard. They're really alive, you see. And I tell everybody that they don't come alive until after 8 o'clock at night.
Tom Avery has spent a lifetime stockpiling brass, copper, and stainless steel. He believes he is trying his best to fulfill the doctor's vision. And now, Dr. Evermore wants to build the ultimate thrill ride on his creation called the Forevertron. The Forevertron weighs over 300 tons and features the decompression chamber from NASA's famous Apollo mission. 1923 Ford motor turbine will provide the Forevertron's power. Tom claims that very soon he will take the final trip of his life, blasting off from this little known corner of Wisconsin, and leaving behind this world and his wondrous creation. And for all those doubters, Tom's leaving behind a telescope so his triumphant flight can be viewed more easily. Frankly, whether we believe Tom's claims or not is irrelevant. He believes them. This earthbound artist and welder has all the faith in the world that he'll soon follow in the bizarre footsteps of his amazing mentor, Dr. Evermore. As Tom Everett, I was an industrial wrecker. As Dr. Evermore, I'm working on the possibilities of making it back into the heavens on a magnetic lightning force beam inside a glass ball, inside a copper egg, and powering on forevermore. Yeah, if you want to ride with me, you come with me. There's plenty of room in the glass ball to make the trip. <laughs> in the junkyard, nothing goes to waste. On the outskirts of Madison, Wisconsin, one old-time scrapper has found a unique way of sticking to that creed. Tom Every has been in the scrap business his entire life. I think that we all evolve, uh, and I recycled about every kind of thing there is. And then when I got all done, I realized, my gosh, there's nothing around even to look at. And so I decided in this uh, balanced part of my life, I would uh, build up instead of tear down. And that's what I'm doing, I guess. Building up has been Tom's passion for nearly 20 years. That's when he first stopped scrapping and assumed the mantle of his creative alter ego, a man he calls Dr. Evermore. The doctor's years of hard work and artistic vision have paid off in a creation dubbed the Forevertron. Built as an ode to immortality, the Forevertron's purpose is to launch the good doctor back into the heavens on a magnetic lightning force beam. And to do that takes a lot of stuff. The Forevertron is uh, about 130 foot long and about 65 feet high and uh, up to 120 foot wide. It weighs a, a little over 400 ton. As you may have guessed, the machine doesn't really work. But at one time, almost everything on it did. The Forevertron is a creative combination of artistic vision and gross tonnage, a metallic fantasy where art and history collide in some unexpected ways. Incorporated into the front of the artwork is part of the real-life decontamination chamber used by the Apollo astronauts after returning from the moon. In contrast, one of the oldest pieces is anything but space age. It's a 19th century bipolar dynamo from a very famous inventor. Well, the big one is built by uh, Thomas Edison. It's the number four one that he ever built. Because the doctor is always finding new things, the Forevertron will never be finished. Like the piles in a scrapyard, it will simply continue to grow. I've saved big uh, copper brew kettles and candy pots and anything that had to do with copper and brass. 
I've got uh, mountains of it. I've got at least a, a couple thousand ton of it laying around here. I'll never live long enough to use it all up, but I just love to see if there's anything that's got some uh, possibilities. And I thoroughly enjoy finding things and then putting them into something else again. With the heart of a scrapper and the eye of an artist, Dr. Evermore's vision isn't too far removed from that of every other junkyard worker. Well, maybe it's a little removed. But the truth is, this is an industry where one person's junk is another's masterpiece. And where value and beauty are truly in the eye of the beholder.